All right, so let's take a look at Conway's life and how to get multiple threads running. So Conway's life, we were looking last time at how to actually deal with when you add certain neighbors, how to make it go to the next step. Of course, I left out a whole bunch of code to make it work. For example, all of these five checks. And I left out all the stuff for making the dead side rules work. If you complete that, though, you should be able to actually step through the simulation. So at the moment, for example, if I make that vertical set of three boxes, when I click the step button, it should make the horizontal box set of three buttons, or three squares. And if I click it again, it should go back to vertical. So at least you have a way to test it now. Assuming this all works, then I should be able to, let's see. There it is, action performed. At the moment, when I click the step button, it takes one step and repaints the frame. So it should actually take one step, update the grid, and then repaint the frame. Just a reminder of last time, we take, took a look at step, created a method to do that. I printed out, take one step. I created a new grid, a new set of Booleans. And I basically went through and checked all of the neighbors. Well, I ch checked many of the neighbors. And then I actually set the new grid for the next step. And then at the end of this for loop here, I actually set my current grid, the grid equals new grid, to be the one that I've updated. And I also set the one over in panel. I had to create this method called set grid so that panel is talking about the same grid as well. The final thing I have to do is I've updated it internally. So to actually see it update, I need to repaint the frame. All right. Now, the Start button. The Start button, what I want it to do is take a series of steps. So it takes one step, repaints, takes another step, repaints, and just keeps on doing that until I reach the Stop button. So I do like my three spots, and I should hit Start, and should continually set, set this running. So if this was going, it'd go back and forth between horizontal and vertical over and over again. I've already added my action listener to start, so I can make the start button work. But the trick is that if I hit the start button and just have a constant while loop running, I will run into trouble. So let's try that naive idea. So if the event source equals start, so. I'm going to try a not working version where I say, well, true equals true. Guess how long that goes on. Step frame dot repaint. So something that happens with this is if I run this, the spark button goes, and I'm never able to click on my thing ever again because I'm stuck in that infinite while loop. Oops. And in fact, I have to go into Eclipse and stop it manually, because it's stuck in this while loop forever. Well, that's not cool. I want to be able to hit the Stop button eventually. Otherwise, I'll never be able to stop my program. So what's going on is I have a single thread of execution right now. So it's going through my program one step at a time and running things. Well. That's fine until I get to here, and I'm stuck in this while true loop forever and ever, and I can never click another button. What I need to happen is I need to free up this main thread so that I'm allowed to click again and have it run this, uh, this step method over and over again in a separate thread of execution. So it's basically running two set different pieces of code at the same time. So the way I'm going to show you how to do this involves creating a run method, which is similar to like the action performed and that kind of stuff we've done before. So besides mouse listener and action listener, I'm going to implement yet another thing called runnable. The runnable uh, interface basically says, I promise I'm going to create a method called run. And when you start a new thread, it will do that, whatever that is. Complaining because I haven't implemented it yet. I'm going to actually manually put this one in. So after I do runnable, capital R, 
two ends. I think I'm going to put that underneath this action performed. Public, void, run, nothing as parameters. So in here, I'm going to have while well, true is true. Step frame dot repaint. So I basically move the stuff that I had in the start button down there. And I'm going to replace this start button with creating the thread. So the way I start a new thread is I've got to create one. Capital uh, T thread. I'm going to name my thread T. Because, you know, that's a great name. It's going to be a new thread. And now it's going to ask in the parentheses which class is going to run. Well, it's this class. Conway's life has the run method, so it's the one that's going to run. To get it all running, I have to do something called t.start. Now, it may seem strange that I do start, and it does the run method. And you should be like, wait, why, why does that happen? That doesn't make sense. What happens with a thread is it does some setup to start another thread of execution when it does start. And after it does that setup, then it calls the run method. So it turns out start eventually calls the run method. This starts a new thread of execution. So if I run this now and I hit start, notice now I can hit other buttons and it's not stuck. So you may notice a bunch of stuff printing out at the bottom if you have any kind of printouts at the bottom because it's constantly running the step over and over and over and over again. So you'll have to manually stop this again because I'm still saying while well, true equals true, which you know goes on forever. 